I just watch The Devil All the Time. It's the latest movie on Netflix that is being recommended and pushed really hard, starring, um, who is it starring? Bill Sarsgaard, the, the It guy, Spider-Man, Tom Holland, a couple of other people that you'll, you'll recognize. Actually, two, two Avengers are in this film. The, the dude with the robotic arm. What's his name? I don't know, but he's in this film too. I just made that connection. But yeah, it's really good. It's really intense. It's a, it's a pretty long movie, but it's definitely very epic. So I'm just going to read the Wikipedia summary because they put it best. Its plot follows disparate characters in post-World War II, Southern Ohio, and West Virginia, including a disabled war veteran, a husband and wife who are uh, killers, and a false preacher. And it spans all these different stories, and it also spans multiple characters. And in the beginning, it might be a little bit hard to follow, or at some points, it'll be hard to follow because there's so many movies going in and out. But ultimately, because we spend enough time with each character, even in the different time zones, we get a sense of who they are, what their motivations are. And it reminded me of The Place Beyond the Pines. That's another movie by Derek Cianfrance. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but uh, and it starred Bradley Cooper and Ryan Gosling. And it showed the effects of like the sins of your father, how it was passed on to your son. So we saw, you know, the fathers commit some unsavory acts and then how it affected their children. And then same with this film, we start with seeing some characters trying to get their life together, just trying to start a life, especially back in post-World War II when not everybody was having like a good time, especially in the places that they showed in West Virginia and Ohio. It was just really, really tough for people to get off the ground. There's like a glimmer of hope, but ultimately they are all sinners this is called the devil all the time every single character in this has i don't want to say evil in them but they're very human and they do terrible things all of them but this movie does a great job of when our main characters that we're supposed to empathize a bit with are doing terrible things we we kind of get it they they're, they're things that are pretty unforgivable that in a court of law they would definitely get in trouble but when you look at the context of what's happening, uh, let, let's say, you know, one of our main characters is Arvin and we see, he sees his father do something terrible at a very young age. And then we see him kind of repeat the same issues and um, it doesn't make it right. But we understand why he is the way he is, why he has such a short temper. And every single story is super interesting. There's even a narrator and usually I don't like narration it just doesn't really work it's hard to make it work but in this case the narrator actually really helped it just it helped move the story along and it made it so that the jumping in between the different characters it was kind of meshed together better just with the omniscient narrator kind of yeah guiding us along but um overall i really like this film I, I think it was super well cast edward cullen that actor What's his name? I'm having trouble um, remembering names, but one sec. Uh, his name Robert Pattinson. He's so freaking good in this movie. I, I hated him so much. His accent is so weird, and I don't even know if it's accurate, but he was fully committed to this role. And I want to talk more about spoilers, so no more... Uh, so go watch this movie. That's what I meant. I mean, no more spoiler-free talk. It's really hard to not really give anything anything away while trying not to spoil it, but... I highly recommend it. I would probably give it like a 8.5, 9 out of 10. Super good. Real criticisms, of whatever. Just go watch it. It's good. You'll, you, you should like it. If you like movies, if you like uh, the adventures, there's two of them in this, you'll like this movie. Okay, so now spoilers. Um, yo, this movie is just... Oops, sorry. Arvin, basically the main character, played by Tom Holland. I really like how this character is written. And actually, I was kind of like thinking... As fucked up as he is, like what he ends up doing, he ends up murdering a bunch of people for vengeance. I kind of was thinking like, I, you know what? I wouldn't mind if he was my son in kind of a, just because he represents like a classic masculinity that I think we've really lost n nowadays. Like I don't want my kid to be anything like him, but at the same time, there's parts of him that, you know, at its core, I like he... He doesn't take shit from anybody like he's traumatized. But if somebody's going to threaten your family, threaten your sister, 
he takes care of that shit, which I like. And at, at his core, he's still a good person. He doesn't intentionally want to hurt anybody. His core value, we can tell, is to protect his family. And that was such a powerful journey where in the, I guess in the very beginning when he sees his father uh, beat those guys up, he sees them defending his family. So he's definitely taking that in. But ultimately when his dad kills himself because their mom has died out of like sadness. And at the end where he's standing where his dad was now, basically a man, and he understands what his dad was going through. That was super powerful and pretty cathartic just to see him come full circle. I don't know if it was like the cleanest thematic finish just because he understood that his father loved his mother so much that he couldn't live without her. I don't know if that was like, a, there, wasn't a, there wasn't a direct parallel in his own life because it's not like he had found somebody he loved. But at the same time, we can, we can see it as his love for his stepsister is what drove him to kill all these people too. So at the end of the day, maybe that's kind of, the message isn't in this film, I don't think that anybody does anything good. Actually, just on the complete opposite. Everybody in this movie does super fucked up things, but they feel human. Even Edward, sorry, Robert Pattinson's character. Dude, okay, his character is so good. His accent is so bizarre. And um, I hated him. I hated him so much. He was such a scumbag. Just from the very first scene when he's judging uh, Arvin's grandmother on their uh, cooking, but doing it in a, in a way that sounded self-righteous, that was like the most rage-inducing scene ever. It's like, oh, look at this food you're giving me. Like... It's so bad and poor, but I'm going to eat it all because I want to save you all from the trouble. But when he was eating it, clearly, like, the, it seems like he secretly liked it. He just wanted it for himself, and Arvin even called it. And that's how they set up that scene. And then when Arvin was, like, holding him up and he was being such a bitch, but he still was trying to blame his sister, that, that's, a, that's a real villain. That's a real-life villain. And I, that was great. And um, Bill Skarsgård playing Arvin's dad, I also liked. I, I just like how he looks. I like the actor a lot. I, I felt like his accent was a little bit weird because, you know, Skarsgård is from um, the Swedish Nor Nordic countries or something. I don't know if he got the accent exactly right, but I thought he was good. Sebastian Stan, that's the dude. That's um, the dude with the robot arm in Avengers. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Really, really good movie. I, it's, you know, Netflix releases like so many Netflix originals now and props to them. I think a lot of them are fun. I've been pretty harsh on some of them, but at the same time, I see that they have an audience. I'm so glad they're doing that. This movie is exactly what I want from Netflix. If they just give me one of these out of every 10 mediocre movies, um, I'm totally more than happy to pay my subscription. This is a quality story that I think is just Netflix is the perfect platform for it. I don't know if necessarily a lot of people might go out to see this type of movie, if, especially if you look at the trailer. It doesn't seem that flashy. You can tell it's kind of a drama, but you don't really know the depth this story goes. There's so much depth, but also it kind of feels like a, a fable or a, like a dark fairy tale because, because of the narration. You know, it's like trying to teach us a lesson. But uh, yeah, I... And also the funny thing is, as anti-religious as this seems on the surface, because everyone's praying all the time and their lives are complete shit, it actually makes me empathize more. Or a part of me almost likes religion a little bit more. Because if the director or writer of this has any religious bones in his body, which I feel like it's possible he does, because there's so much symbolism and imagery and messaging in this, at least it's being honest. It's like showing us a very true reflection of what humanity is capable of, capable of and deals with every day. And that's what I really like. Maybe because of all the suffering, all of these terrible things that are just also self-inflicted, there, there's probably demons or something in all these characters. If that is what life is, then I understand why you would need God. Because life in this film is, it's brutal. It's really brutal. But yeah, that's all I got. Really like this film. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Thank you.